welcome back to computer vision lecture series this is lecture 9 part 3 in this lecture we will continue talking about um, uh, what we are discussing in the last lecture uh, about correspondence problem we saw that we could solve correspondence search using uh, a similarity constraint so given left and right stereo image pairs we plot a scan line across the both the images and we start looking we fix a point in the left image or a window in the left uh, in the left image and start to look for that similar um, similar windows along the scan line in the right image and using a matching cost or a normal uh, matching cost could be a sum of square distances or a normalized correlation to find the matching uh, window on the right scan line and once we if we use uh, the sum of square distances the value of this uh, cost will be low Whereas if we use a normalized correlation, the value will be high because the correlation is high. And we can choose these windows to be uh, matches and therefore the pixel on the left in the middle of the window matches to the pixel on the right in the middle of that same uh, window. Okay, but we also saw the correspondence problem here that if we find, uh, plot an intensity profile along the scan lines in the right, left and the right image, even though we can see visually that they are quite similar that we have made a match uh, it is not easy to match them how we will take an example let's say uh, we, we found that uh, these two scan lines are um, uh, the, these two are the stereo image pairs and these two are the scan lines left and right and we start or fix um, a feature point along the scan line maybe this one which looks quite distinct and it has um, uh, two corners here so it's a very distinct feature point on the left hand image and we try to find or match uh, this window uh, in the right hand side of the image so we take this window on the left hand side uh, and this is a feature point for us because these are corners so they are very good and we try to find them uh, along the scan line or the epipolar line on the right image and the neighborhood of these kind of corresponding points will be similar in intensity patterns and using the matching cost, uh, sorry, using the similarity constraints, we can find this proper windows and therefore we can in, uh, eventually map the points. So what do we do? We take an image band, we draw another scan line, we take a small uh, to, uh, to show these parallel lines is uh, the intent, uh, intention to show these parallel lines is to show that we are going to slide our window along this uh, two parallel lines in both the images and we are looking in the so the left image band is like this and we fix our window along this um, a distinct feature point and we try to find or uh, map uh, the intensity values uh, when we do a matching in the right image band and we find that the intensity profile is quite distinct and it is it can be easily see that the we can easily see that the cross correlation is somewhere here so on the right image band um, the window will be uh, nicely correlated uh, in this uh, in this location and this graph uh, high point or the peak of this graph shows that uh, so essentially we have calculated uh, a proper correlation uh, using this window matching window matching approach however there are problems with this what if we choose a feature less uh, window or our window size is not uh, big enough or small enough for example visually we can say here that because there is a neighborhood of this window with which has this distinctive feature i can match it to the right hand side of the image however we have already fixed our window size and maybe this window misses this feature point so when we look at the intensity profile plotted by this um, uh, windowed approach for the, this target region, we see that there are a lot of highs um, or a lot of maximas being uh, given out. Clearly there is a maxima near this image where there is a small point here but also there is a maxima here. So it's not clear which one is the true match or which one is the true correspondence. Uh, so it is easy to see that textureless regions are not a good feature point. They are not distinct enough for uh, finding this uh, match. And there is a high ambiguity for such matches. Um, so there is an issue with the window size as well. So let's say if we fix, we have a smaller window, and there are this is an uh, these are left and right hand side of the image of the stereo image pairs, 
and if we do the windowed approach we find that there is a, there are a lot of noise uh, and there is uh, uh, in the disparity map however uh, we are able to see a general um, view or a general structure of the image here so we can see more details here the shape and the size of the original uh, objects in the original images is uh, visible in the disparity map however if we increase the larger window then the, the smoothness of the edges they it is reduced it is lost and there is no uh, the, the details are not preserved anymore and we, we don't see the uh, original sh structures um, of the image uh, in the disparity map however uh, the noise is uh, reduced to a lot uh, low for example in the lower window size we, we see there is a lot of noise because the window size is small and it has multiple matches and therefore there are a lot of fake or incorrect uh, detections uh, on due to the small window size however with large window size um, because uh, even if uh, there is an addition of small detail that does not is not uh, uh, that information is not registered in the matching cost and therefore because of that um, we, the noise is removed however the details are also lost for example here you can see that the branches of the trees are in a weird shape uh, uh, and we cannot um, see clearly the depth or the disparity of these uh, um, tree branches so uh, a better uh, result would be to adapt uh, to a window size um, in, a, in an adaptive fashion so this is another result with uh, some window search with uh, which we have uh, done uh, adaptive window size so for every feature or every uh, distinctive feature we uh, fix a size during the window search and then we try to find the this disparity map uh, this is a bit different way of looking at the disparity map here uh, orange uh, or red more uh, images are toward more col colors are more towards the camera and uh, uh, green and yellow are uh, away from the camera so this is the ground truth this is what the uh, final disparity map should look like and based on the best window size and the adaptive window approach we still are able to see that there are uh, there are a lot of artifacts or miscorrect or incorrect uh, predictions of the uh, disparities along uh, uh, around the image so even this uh, window based search is not uh, so efficient so there are uh, a few solutions to this uh, beyond individual correspondences to uh, to find the disp disparity map or the depth maps is to optimize correspondence assignments uh, jointly so either we look at scan line at one time one scan line at one time or we do a 2d grid search along the whole image to find uh, proper window sizes and these are more uh, complex approaches um, or better solutions to finding disparity map okay um, hierarchical correspondence is one way um, uh, of also finding a better correspondence or a better disparity map we have already seen how image pyramids work right and we have seen them work for optical flow as well and we are going to reformulate the same problem of correspondence in by using that previous technique so what we do is we decrease or down sample our original resolution to as much as required and with the lower image uh, resolution maybe this is a size of a thumbnail maybe it is only 20 cross 20 for this uh, we also reduce um, so for for this we find the disparity map and because it's a 20 to cross 20 uh, this is just an example and because the lowest resolution is 20 cross 20 it is easy the search space is not too high so it's easy to find a rough uh, disparity estimate with the two uh, uh, stereo image pairs and once you have found this disparity map you resample or up sample your um, lower image resolutions to higher image resolutions and then you recalculate the disparity and then you just refine them like we did for optical flow so hierarchical correspondence is also one way of getting rid of noises and getting or preserving the original shapes or si and sizes of the structures in the image um, so uh, this is one solution uh, one of the solutions to finding 
um, as a and as an alternative to uh, windows window based, based approach uh, to finding correspondences and this is very very cool and even the even the state of the art convolutional neural networks these days uh, have you have been using a lot of uh, a lot of them have been using uh, this kind of um, image pyramids uh, and they are called feature pyramids instead of image pyramids because they work on feature levels and they have multiple scale features uh, through which they are using uh, feature extraction and then they are they are training on these features and then uh, doing uh, object detection segmentation and so on and so forth so um, image pyramids have still are still quite uh, useful um, one important thing to note is that uh, the current state of the art in computer vision is not so new as much the most of the ideas are taken from the previous decades and therefore it is essential to learn or to go through these papers uh, which we have come across during our lecture which have been from 90s 1980s to 1990s even 2000s early to 21st century um, quite interesting work done by the people and we can always uh, find uh, motivations and solutions in the previous work as well as we have seen in this couple of lectures in the previous uh, couple of lectures that we can reformulate our new problems into such a way that we can use our previous techniques to solve it and this is a very efficient trick and uh, as engineers our intention is to find the solution to the problem in the fastest most efficient way and uh, this is one way to do that so it's very popular and uh, uh, not just in engineering actually in uh, other fields like pharmacy um, neurosciences they do this quite often uh, anyways let's look at uh, some different approaches like scan line stereo as well as some uh, graph cuts based methods as well as energy optimization methods for uh, solving stereo correspondence problem so what is scanline stereo? Uh, scanline stereo is basically finding um, disparity map or fi finding the correspondences, correspondences using only one scan lines. Um, uh, sorry, not only one, but based on uh, scan line correspondences only. And for each and every scan line, you optimize both of them or uh, the problem. Uh, independently of the other scan lines. So once you find correspondences using these two scan lines, uh, you move on to another scan lines, maybe up below or above, but you don't use the information from the previous scan line. And this is the uh, this is the essence of using the scan line uh, stereo. Okay, so uh, shortest paths. So this is another one of those examples where we will reformulate our scan line stereo problem to find uh, shortest paths that match between two image features and using uh, dynamic programming and pre-computed or pre previously defined methods or previously um, defined uh, algorithms we will use them to find or, or solve our uh, correspondence problem here we have left and right hand side of the image okay and uh, we assume um, for a particular segment of the image or a particular segment of the scan line uh, let's say on the left hand side image we take this uh, particular segment of the scan line and we match the beginning and end of this scan line in the right hand side of the image and we have in between uh, a lot of pixel values okay our assumption here is this graph suggests that the pixel on the left on the top left is the one which is uh, which has the its correspondence established similarly the pixel on the right left um, right bottom is um, uh, established so s left is representing the pixel on the left hand side of the image and s right is the pixel on the uh, right hand side of the image uh, these pixels are on, uh, taken from this particular scan line scan line uh, segment so what we do essentially uh, once we fix uh, one correspondence here on the left hand side of the image on that particular scan line we start matching it along the scan line in the right hand side of the image and when uh, and we uh, we move uh, in one pixel towards the right uh, to find the correspondences and whenever we find a match we we move one pixel more on the left hand side and then we start looking again so this is what is done um, so when you when you put the um, 
pixel values like this so there are these many combinations possible and here what we see is there are multiple things involved so let's say uh, when you move on in the left hand side of the image one pixel on the right and you find an immediate correspondence in the right hand side of the image so it would mean that uh, by moving one pixel in the left image you, you also move one pixel on the right hand side of the image so this kind of um, feature is when you will this kind of feature will be generated only when you find the correspondences okay but what if there is um, an occlusion uh, in the left image or on the right image and because of this occlusion you will not be able to find the correspondences during such cases so let's say there is uh, some occlusion on the right hand side of the image uh, and what will happen is you will have to move your left hand uh, the this this pixel on the left hand side of the image um, one more on the you, you have to change your uh, pixel because you are not able to find the correspondence and you will get a flat curve something like this which represents the right occlusion where if whereas if you get one to one correspondence you will get something like this similarly you will get a vertical line when you have a left occlusion so there will be points on the left hand side also which are not uh, visible in the right hand side so similarly there might be points on the right hand side which are not visible on the left hand side and because of this there will be left and right occlusion vertical lines will represent a left occlusion and horizontal as the right occlusion the interesting point of this is the the authors here were able to reformulate this whole uh, problem into using dynamic programming and they could solve this shortest path algorithm using sh shortest paths uh, idea they could find this path along the stereo line along the stereo scan line so what we do here is we have divided the problem into uh, scan, for, for scan line stereo into uh, finding shortest paths where you can find uh, correspondences quickly so this is a bit more efficient way of finding uh, correspondences along the scan line stereo However, scanline stereo suffer from the problem of streaking. So what happens is that you see this um, um, uh, this um, features which are blue in color or they are more horizontally stretched. So these kind of features are generated in the scanline stereo and these are the problems. However, when you look at this uh, uh, whole uh, disparity map, you can see that in general it is um, it's quite good much better than our windowed approach for example it is much better than our windowed based uh, search so scanline studio is quite uh, more efficient than the windows based search but it has its own problems here uh, the uh, streaks are one of the problems and why do streaks occur is because scanline stereo is uh, focused on only the scan lines or the epipolar lines it does not consider the neighborhood or the windows or the surrounding features uh, it does not consider its uh, intensity values for its um, uh, correspondence and therefore these kind of streaks are introduced in the algorithm so we cannot uh, use dynamic programming to find correspondences on a 2d grid it's it's not meant for that however there are other methods possible like um, like this here for example accurate and efficient stereo processing by semi global matching and mutual information here what the authors do they define uh, entropy of image 1 uh, entropy of image 2 and then uh, entropy between image 1 and 2 and that this they call a mutual information between the two images the authors have um, pursued a window based approach in this case and um, let's say while doing the scan line matching um, if there is that is not if there is a huge differences in the scan line features so you will get a lot of vertical and horizontal occlusions in that case the mutual inform uh, sorry the entropy between the two images uh, will be quite uh, high because they are not similar in that case if this uh, term is high the mutual information between the two images will decrease uh, due to this mathematical relationship and the authors were able to enforce this constraint while doing the scan line stereo to improve its performance in a more uh, um, neighborhood fashion along this scan line stereo 
They also introduced a feature called semi-global matching where they introduce uh, an error metric or a way of calculating the cost, um, matching cost in a more global, more semi-global fashion. And using these two constraints, they were able to improve the scanline uh, stereo's performance. Okay, so we saw until now how we can solve uh, stereo uh, correspondences using scanline. Uh, stereo can also be reformulated as an energy minimization problem. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, the first question we need to ask is what is a good stereo correspondence? The good stereo correspondence would have a good matching quality. We'll have each pixel corresponded to the its corresponding right pixel on the other image. Um, whatever is visible, of course, uh, neglecting the ones which are not visible or the occlusions are uh, discarded. And there is a smoothness prior imposed on this matching so that uh, the edges are preserved, the uh, objects which are having the same structure or the same are moving in the same direction, uh, move in the same with the same disparity. So essentially what we are saying that if two pixels are adjacent, adjacent they should move usually uh, about with the same amount. So this is the idea of our good correspondence, right? And uh, so stereo matching can also be reformulated or repurposed into an energy minimization problem. What do we mean by energy minimization? So energy is uh, essentially this combination of these two uh, functions, E smooth and E data. Uh, they are weighted uh, with alpha and beta values accordingly. Uh, depending on your problem, you can change the, you can modify the values of alpha and beta depending on how uh, much you want one factor to weigh over the other factor. Okay. First, E data. What is E data? E data here we see that is uh, kind of looks like a sum of square distances uh, in a windowed neighborhood approach. And it is like that. So, uh, e data could be con we can consider it as our uh, sum of square distances or our error metric which we want to minimize okay uh, in this in windowed fashion along the uh, epipolar line in the second image whereas the smoothness function is a function which enforces smoothness criteria across the uh, windows so what it will do is if um, a pixel correspondence is found it will enforce that its neighborhoods pixel will also have similar uh, disparities or would have similar um, um, how do you say this uh, depth and that it will impose that information on the minimization problem and this will enforce um, uh, the algorithm to be more smooth for the for the local re regions and also preserve the structures and this can be done using graph cuts as well Okay, but uh, so by using this graph cut methods, we were able to get rid of a lot of noise along in the image. The streak noises are gone. The smoothness is preserved quite much, much better than the previous uh, methods. And we can see that uh, it uh, the final um, disparity map is quite close to the, to the original ground truth map. And this is our intention of finding the correspondence and graph cut method using this energy minimization um, yeah, gives us a much better result for uh, stereo correspondences by giving us uh, very nice looking uh, disparity maps. So what are the challenges we face for stereo correspondence problem solving is one is the low cost low contrast uh, textureless image regions because they do not have any distinctive image um, feature and therefore they it is very difficult to match them across images so somehow we have to consider them uh, there are occlusions uh, depending on the baselines you choose and the disparities uh, sorry the baseline that you choose and uh, that can be uh, the occlusions can be higher or lower and um, uh, there are a lot of methods there is one more a interesting observation that you can think of is you start with a small baseline and then you incrementally increase the baseline such that uh, you are able to re um, uh, you are able to account for the occlusions you are able to account for newly introduced objects in your image region 
and so this is what is done uh, these days so uh, you have two camera setup you have uh, small baselines between them and then you, you start capturing images and start increasing the baseline and you are doing stereo correspondences for in the first uh, setup and then you recompute for the second third fourth and slowly you are able to recreate the 3d structure of the image or, or of, the, of the scene using this uh, incremental approach violations of brightness constancy uh, is also an, an important problem uh, so if there is cloud cover or if there is shadow or if there is intensity changes uh, the intense you cannot match the intensity values of left pixel on to the right pixel so we need a better approach and we all have already seen one of them uh, in, in that we can use normalized correlations for that. Uh, so for really large baselines we have already seen uh, what were the issues that if you have large baselines the, there are a lot of occlusions more, more different objects coming in and uh, fewer correspondences uh, because of the uh, large change in the appearance of the images. So we have to really consider the baseline information as well as as well as some cali camera calibration errors can creep into our algorithm for finding correspondences okay so we have seen the challenges as well i hope you have enjoyed this uh, correspondence lectures and uh, in the next lecture we will start um, uh, looking into structured light and until then um, goodbye thank you Thank you.